Damian Lillard mm. coming up with one of the greatest shots you will ever see in an NBA game. And I try not to be filled with hyperbole exaggeration, however you want to call it. I don't think you are, though, man. But what we saw from Damian Lillard last night, from what we saw from him last night with time running down against an Oklahoma City Thunder team that was poop-talking him, crap-talking him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Word rhymes with hit. Sure does. And that's all they were doing over the last several games. Game three, the game that Oklahoma City took in this series, it was last Friday night. Russell Westbrook rocked the baby on him, made a few shots, and then made that baby motion, which you can take in any way you want. <laughs> All of them are disrespectful. Yeah. Schroeder, the point guard, in the fourth quarter, tapping his wrist, which is Damian Lillard's move when he takes games over in the fourth quarter. It's game time. Sure is. Lillard time, however you want to call it. Yep. Tapping his wrist, that was his move. So Schroeder was doing that, mocking him. Mm -hmm. Paul George dunked with no time left in a game that was already totally decided. Could have dribbled the ball out, decided to jam it down home. Lillard, after the game, said he saw all of that, and he took it all in. So that's the backdrop of Lillard coming up with a game-winning, series-ending, buzzer-beating, 37-foot jumper, three-pointer in a tie game at the buzzer to send home the opponent that has been crap-talking him and the Blazers all week. And the three-pointer he took from 37 feet away was over the guy who dunked at the buzzer in the Game 3 poop-talking loss that they had suffered at the hands of the Oklahoma City Thunder. He made the shot over Paul George. The backdrop also includes the Blazers getting swept out of last year's playoffs by the Pelicans after being swept out of the previous year's playoffs by the Warriors. Coming into this series, they had lost nine consecutive playoff games. Two consecutive series by not even winning a game. It has been a nightmare in recent springs in Portland, Oregon. All of that is the backdrop. And Damian Lillard hits that shot to cap a 50-point night for himself. I will say this. In the history of the NBA playoffs... Okay. When you think of walk-off, buzzer-beating, series-ending shots, it's a rarity. It is a rarity. Shots are usually made with mere seconds left. I'm talking about buzzer goes off, ball through net, drive home safely, as Damian Lillard did within mere nanoseconds of the ball going through the hoop, turning around and waving bye-bye <laughs> to the Oklahoma City Thunder. That was amazing. To be able to do that, it's a rarity. So the only thing you can compare this to is the famed Michael Jordan shot over Craig Elo to end the 1989 first-round series for the Bulls, who had years built up of misery and disappointment. This was before the dynasty happened. It is actually credited with sparking the dynasty. The Cavs had beaten the Bulls in that season all six times they had faced them in the regular season. The Cavs were the team that had one of the best records in the NBA. The Cavs were a team that the Bulls had to get through. Pistons were also there in the Eastern Conference as well. But they had to get through the Cavs. Now, I understand that the Blazers had the better record. They didn't have to get through Oklahoma City. I don't believe that a sure. dynasty is going to be born, with all due respect, to Portland. 
But with everything that we saw built up for the Bulls, and I know we're talking Jordan, Mm -hmm. but the similarities are there. And you could even make the case because Jordan, by hitting that shot over Elo with no time left to end the series, capped a 44-point night for him. This is a 50-point night. As a matter of fact, the stat line for Lillard last night is the best stat line we've ever seen for somebody who scored 50. Nobody has ever scored 50 with at least five rebounds, five assists, and 10 three-pointers made in the game. I will ask all of you to go to the NBA's Twitter page. They have a a four-and-a-half-minute video of Lillard's entire night from the field. Look at how many shots he made with the team down either 10, 9, or 8 early on in the game. And including a three-pointer that he made when the team was down 108-100 with less than five minutes to go. As the Thunder just absolutely melted down. Complete meltdown. They turned it to the Washington Generals to Lillard's personal Harlem Globetrotters. They were just basically there to fill out what turned out to be an amazing Hollywood scripted ending for the for the Blazers. That was unbelievable. And you know how much we love Damian Lillard on this show. We, we talk do, about man. him all, all the time. All the time. Nobody talks about him because we're focused on the Warriors and Harden, by the way. That could be the next round that we're going to get. We're expecting the Rockets to close out the Jazz. So that would be a series that we're all focused on. And while either the Nuggets, who've suddenly come on strong, look like they're about to close out the Spurs, take on the Blazers, we're just going to look at that as filler while we have the what no doubt everyone will call the true Western Conference final. Or NBA final. <laughs> so all of that together, understand Lillard has to be in the conversation to top five player in the NBA. Has to. Top five player. He's up there with Harden, Giannis, Durant, Curry. He really is. All you got to do is just look at the tape of the last couple of All-Star games, too. While he's playing in games with these guys. Yeah, it's either teammates or opponents. Kid out of Weaver State wearing zero. Holy crap, that was unbelievable. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.